If you want to stay on the top of the first page of the Amazon search results or still trying to get your product ranked there, you must take Amazon SEO very seriously. In this video, you will learn how to analyze your market and based on that, find out how to properly optimize your product listing with SEO in mind. Hi, Jeremiah. I'm really happy to have you here on Orange Click channel today with me uh, to talk about Amazon product optimization. So before we go to today's uh, topic and uh, into the discussion, how to understand if products are under optimized, uh, could you first introduce yourself and also let us know how uh, DataHawk helps Amazon sellers? Yeah, no, thank you very much for having me. Uh, again, I'm Jeremiah Chambers. I'm the VP of sales over here at DataHawk. And you know, we're a marketing data and analytics platform. And what we do is we help give those insights to Amazon sellers so that they can get ahead in the market and absolutely dominate their space. That's uh, what we love to do. And that's what we have a passion for. Sounds great. And we know that uh, today on Amazon, the competition is higher than ever before. So if you have to very shortly summarize what's the most important thing sellers have to know about optimizing Amazon product listing, then uh, what would it be? I'd say the most important thing is realize that this is not a set it and forget it process. Uh, this is something that you're going to have to continuously analyze your listings, make some changes, and you're going to have to move with the market rather than just simply, hey, I've got a great listing and it seems to be doing well now. You're going to have to make sure you monitor it as it goes along because that great listing that's great today can fall behind in the coming weeks, months, maybe years uh, if we don't keep an eye on it. Okay, and before we uh, started recording, we also uh, had a little chat about uh, what's really important uh, when it comes to, um, to optimizing product listings and how important it is actually uh, to start off by looking at the market as a whole and understanding uh, the space uh, where the product is uh, listed. So um, how sellers should uh, approach the whole process of optimizing a product listing today? So the way I really like to guide people through this is when you think about your product, you want to first compare it to the most like products you can. Um, and an easy way to start with that is long tail keywords. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, I'm you know going to show an example later of flavored water. And flavored water is a it's a smaller subcategory, but it's still pretty big. So you want to narrow it down to something that's as like your product as you can. Uh, so we look at a long tail keyword such as you know water infused with cherry. And that long tail keyword gives us a smaller subset. So we don't have to look at this really big market and compare things. We can look at this kind of small sub market and compare our product to things that are most like it. Uh, that strategy, we've seen that go to play many times with our clients. And that tends to work out best because we're competing with the products that are most like it on the digital shelf. Okay, and you said uh, you have something prepared for us as well. Uh, is it regarding to the example and uh, should we go uh, to it right now or discuss some other things related to optimization in general? Now, let's dive right in. And we're talking about you know how to recognize when your product is under-optimized first. And, and again, there's a little bit of a process here. So starting off, we're going to talk about uh, why this matters. We're going to talk a little bit about how to identify when your product is under-optimized and then give you some steps to help rectify that. Uh, something I want to just put on the screen real quick, if, if you want to, there is a QR code here to follow us on LinkedIn. We got a lot of cool posts. Uh, we have a, a quarterly benchmark report that's available to anybody for free that you can take advantage of. Uh, and then, of course, our blog. We are always putting new content out there to help out sellers. So feel free to take advantage of that. Uh, so first, why does this matter? So again, I talked about it earlier how with this whole optimization of your listing, this is not a set and forget it process. You have to move with the, mar the market. And the reason why it's important, this is gonna be what drives that traffic to your listing. Uh, this is gonna be able to give you that brand visibility and increase your sales. Uh, when it comes to Amazon, it's very algorithmically based. And if you've got the right type of optimization on your listing, you will be on that higher page number, that page one, two, or three. Your listing is going to be closer to the top, and it is going to give you more visibility, more clicks, and more sales. So this is a very important process to keep in mind. Also, in, in recent months, we've been hearing about people uh, having their listings be taken off of Amazon because they did not fit into its compliance. So uh, making sure that your listing is there can make sure it's just visible at all. 
which is very important. Uh, so what goes into that product listing optimization? This is probably basic for a lot of you, but of course you've got keywords, product images, product titles, pricing is very important, making sure that you're priced appropriately for your section of the market, uh, product descriptions, key features, back-end search keywords, and uh, now especially something that's growing is customer Q&A. Uh, making sure that you have an active Q&A section is, uh, depending on your type of product, can be very important for your optimization. Uh, so I want to show you just an example of a really good optimized product listing and walk you through a few things that you see here. Now, this is a, a candle warmer. So just going to say candle warmers an optimized listing and candle warmers doesn't exactly equate to a beauty product or uh, possibly an outdoors or sports product. In this category, this is what's considered to be a really good optimized listing. Uh, so you look at it. So first, you have a strong, well-structured title. If you look at that title, you're going to see some of those keywords showing up there, and it's going to be very descriptive of what it is. Uh, this is a prime. This has prime status. It's got over 13,000 reviews. Now we all know reviews can't just uh, come out of nowhere. That takes time to build up. But the more reviews you have, the more important it is. And I'll show you here in a minute how to identify like what your target should be. Uh, in your market, even if you're just standing up a brand new product or brand new listing, your target for reviews just to make it onto a certain page. Uh, you got the advanced attributes on here, really good bullet points, having your bullet points structured appropriately. And again, I'll show you in, in a moment how to identify that uh, is very important when it comes down to your listing. Uh, if you compare your product listing to something that's competing in your space, that's doing much better, uh, that, that's much higher on the bestseller ranking. If you look at your content compared to theirs on the listing, you probably notice some differences in those bullet points, maybe your title uh, and a few other things there. But again, this is an example of a really good product listing and just pointing out a few things about it uh, that make a lot of sense. So when we go into uh, the DataHawk platform, I'll show you a few things we have there. There's a few basics that we do. We do analytics, connections, and insights. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is more very specific to this whole product listing and how to realize it's un under-optimized. Uh, so first, we're going to pick on uh, this listing right here. So again, I mentioned we're going to look in the flavored water category. Uh, so here we're looking at a specific product. This is Hint Water Cherry. So again, we talked about uh, using a long tail search term. Uh, so when we looked up the search term, water infused with cherry, this is one of the best sellers there. So this is really a good model for what a, a solid listing would look like. So we want to look at some of the dynamics of it. So we got the buy box, buy box price here. Uh, we can see some estimated monthly sales. We can say, yeah, this is definitely a good target for us. And to actually show you the listing, this is something that's kind of cool that we do on our platform is we break the listing down in a very uh, detailed format. And we do that first by looking at listing quality. So we have a listing quality score. It goes through an overall score. And then we have title, description, bullet points, image, and A plus content. So as you can see, this scores really well. This is some really good content. It's got a very high score of 92%. Uh, and if you actually go into the listing, you can see why. Uh, but it'll tell you a little bit about this. So if I scroll over title, it tells me what about the title makes this a really good 94% uh, listing quality score for title. Uh, it's got capitalized first letters, non-capitalized small words. Uh, you've got under 200 characters. All those things are attributes that make this solid. So it's breaking it down for you. Same thing for description, bullet points images in a plus content and if we go into this uh this actual listing as well this is something we like to call the time machine uh you can set up again if you're optimizing your listing your listing optimization a lot of times is only as good as what's happening in the market uh, so if your competitors are updating their listings updating their content changing the keywords that they have in that listing that means you're going to probably want to change yours too uh, if they're especially if they're seeing some gains in their organic rank. Uh, so you can set up alerts to have this automatically alerted, but we can actually go back in time and see any changes that are made. But you see things like certain words, how many times they pop up in the listing. What does the title look like? What do these bullet points look like? And if there's been any changes, you can see those show up too. So earlier I mentioned 
you do want to think about things at the market level or category level. So let's talk about pricing for a second. Uh, and let's talk about what that looks like. So for this, again, we're in the uh, water infused with cherry. This is the long tail keyword that we're looking at. There's not a ton of search results for this particular keyword. But the reason why we're looking at that long tail is because we want to look at the products most like ours. In this scenario, we're talking about flavored water infused with cherry. You know, think about the long tail keyword for your product. What's the best descriptor that is actually ranking on Amazon that you can use to narrow down the search to, I, to compare your product to only those that are most like it? So you're going to see you have the average price of $27.22. Uh, we can actually uh, look at this and see how it works by page. If you're looking at this, this chart here, this is the global chart. This is the page. So this is page one. So page one, what this is telling me is that almost all the sales, you have an average sale of $23.58. So if my price is close to $23.58, algorithmically, I'm going to be doing a little bit better if I have my, my product price appropriately. We talked about reviews earlier. I said 13,000 reviews for that product earlier, but you may be thinking, okay, just how many reviews do I need to get to even you know, qualify, if you will, for page one? What this is telling us for number of ratings, in order to get to page one, you have to have at least 110 ratings on your product just to get there. And then when you look at your actual rating itself, there's an average of uh, 4.38 stars. If you're there or above, you're doing well. So this is a little bit about the market dynamics. And if you're not close to page one and you're trying to climb your way up, you can actually go all the way out to page five and you're gonna see a little bit different things. See, like we talked about earlier, 23.58 was the right price for page one, 25.91 is the right pay price for page five. The uh, star rating is about the same but it only takes around 56 ratings to, to rank on page five. So it's a little bit different dynamics that you have. I actually have one question. So for example, here um, you brought us an example based on this one uh, long tail keyword phrase, right? And uh, you see the price, uh, price data and also the rating and reviews. Um, so when sellers now uh, start to do kind of the same process for their product, uh, then for different keywords, they get different data points. So how should they choose the long tail keyword about what they, for for example, uh, check out the price data and and uh, make their uh, conclusions like how should they change their product price uh, or keep it the same one. Yeah, and and with this, really the 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 challenge is is the market can be so wide. I mean, we all know the categories on Amazon can contain a lot of different products. The long term keyword that you, or long tail keyword that you really want to identify is just what you identify as closest to your actual product. That's ranking, right? Uh, so in this case, water infused with cherry was probably the best term for this because flavored water, are, although offered different results, it's a little bit too wide. There's too many products that are flowing into flavored water. So it's like, what do I compare my product to? You know, you think if you're selling, uh, I'm just going to use a different a different product uh, completely just as an example, but if I'm selling noise canceling headphones that are black, for instance, if I just used a term like noise canceling headphones, I'm getting a lot of results back. But if I want to get something as close to my product, it might be something like over the ear noise canceling headphones, color black or just black that's gonna narrow down that market. So when I'm changing my listing and, and optimizing my listing, I'm only comparing it to, again, the products that most closely match mine. That's that sub market that I wanna focus on because if I win that, then I can start charging my way up in that larger subcategory of, you know, again, in this scenario, flavored water. Yeah, very good. Yeah, if I understood correctly, then the long tail keyword should be as relevant as possible to the product. Uh, it's just more uh, niche down than, let's say, the shorter and more general uh, keyword, which usually has more competition as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 the and the challenge was, and one of the reasons why I usually recommend this is sometimes it's the seller themselves uh, that just gets lost in the process, or uh, you have someone on your team that you're delegating this to. 
And for them, they need some really strong guidance uh, because if you look at the wrong data, then you end up mispricing your product or you end up missing out on some market dynamics that could uh, cause you to just not be as fully optimized as you'd like to be. Okay, very good insights. Thanks. When you're looking at the uh, these products, again, you can look through these listings. If you look through the keyword ranks, this is, again, going to bring us back to uh, that long tail keyword uh, is going to be in here, you're going to see a smaller result back with, from this because we're talking about water infused with cherry. That's what we were using. And this product is, is again, this is the one that we're really chasing after. You see it's ranking page one, uh, first placement. Uh, you are seeing some stars in here. So they are sponsoring some content on here every once in a while. Uh, but this is the one, if I'm, if I'm a competitor trying to break into this uh, flavored water space, and I have this water infused with cherry that I'm trying to uh, optimize my listing on, it's good to have a good example of what looks right uh, when it comes down to the uh, buyers on Amazon. And, and based on Amazon's algorithm and people's buying behavior, this is the product to chase because, again, it's ranking very highly. So if I follow this listing and use this almost as a guideline for what my listing should look like, I can see how many images they have, what type of images, the description that they use, the title they use. Uh, and there's a lot of that that I can I can kind of adopt on my own methodology with my, my listings to say, hey, this is the way to optimize it. And again, I showed you that listing quality scores at 94% earlier. Uh, so this is going to be uh, a way that I can look at mine, compare what's different, what's the same, and make some uh, specific changes and see the results of that as time goes on. Because once you do that, the important thing is to say, what's the impact of the changes that I made on my listing? Uh, so without tracking it, you're missing a major portion <laughs> uh, of this whole process. But if I'm going to change the title, change the bullet points, add in some new keywords, uh, put some higher quality images on there or, or tack on some A-plus content. When I do that, I need to see how is that impacting my organic ranking in the following days? Uh, is it getting us closer to that ultimate goal that we have? Uh, and thinking with your ad strategy as well, how can I add some extra fire into this and uh, possibly start bidding on maybe that specific keyword that uh, that I was focused on to start the whole process in the first place. With this, there's a, there's a few ways of, of doing this. Obviously, I'm honing in on one product here, uh, looking at that, but thinking about scheduling um, average, just a, a standard timing of when you're going to do kind of your PDP audits. When am I going to audit my, my product detail page? As I said, this is an ongoing process. Whether you have one product on Amazon or 1,000 products on Amazon, uh, you need to set some type of standard for yourself and your team for benchmarking what your minimum expectations are, what your performance is now, and also what your listing quality is now. Uh, the easiest way to do that, pull reports. Obviously, you can do that in DataHawk. We have a way that you can pull these large reports and see all of your product detail pages, kind of a snapshot to see which ones need work, which ones don't. And then when you're going in to make those changes, take a few moments, step back, look at the market as a whole, think about your pricing, think about your positioning, how many ratings you have, and then start leaning into content. And no matter what, always, always, always track what happens after you make your changes. That's going to be a, a really telling part. Okay, very good. Uh, so you say it's, uh, so regarding like updating, so when sellers, let's say there's a best-selling product and the seller actually hasn't been updating the title or the bullet points really because it has been selling and uh, didn't feel the need to change anything. But now when they do look the market, they understand like, wait, wait, we're missing out on sales because we don't have certain keywords in or we actually should improve the copywriting. So what's the recommended process of updating titles and bullets? Should sellers just uh, update everything once, uh, let's say by using flat files, or is it like something that sellers should do step-by-step, step, for example, if they want to update bullet number one that currently includes five keywords and now they want to take some away and add some new ones in. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a step-by-step -step approach when you can is probably going to be the uh, the best way to do it. And, and tracking those changes is important as well. Uh, you know, Again, I kind of showed you with the listing in, inside our system. You'll be able to have DataHawk tell you what changed, when it changed, 
And then you can see the results of that to see how it actually affected your organic ranking. So that's the way that, that I would prefer it. Uh, obviously, time and the resources you have available can dictate whether or not you can do it that way. Uh, but the step-by-step step approach is what I've seen uh, a lot of our clients use. And it's been very helpful for them. Another part about it as well is that if you have an agency that's doing this on your behalf, uh, it's always good to still do these audits. Uh, sometimes you put a lot of trust in your agency and say, hey, they're they're going to take care of all of this. It's good to just check on it. See, see, did all those changes that we agreed to go into effect? If you have a third party that may be making these uh, listing updates to you as well. That's something very important. We just had a, a, a situation recently where there was uh, supposed to be A plus content added to around 100 listings, and it just didn't happen. And they had no clue until we looked at it in our system. So important to track those changes. Okay, that's a really good tip. Uh, so you mentioned a couple of times that uh, DataHawk obviously has a platform for Amazon sellers. So uh, to wrap up this interview, could you uh, highlight what are the different uh, uh, parts of your platform or software uh, that help Amazon sellers to optimize their listings and track also the changes? Yeah, so so I'll, I'll cut right to what's probably most different uh, between us and some of the other providers out there is uh, something that we do is that I showed you a lot of cool things in the platform, but probably one of the more impressive things is that we can pump all this Amazon data to just about any destination that you might want, whether it's Power BI, Tableau, Domo, uh, Google Sheets, just about anywhere. You can have it where you want, the way that you want it to look. So you can have custom dashboards, things like that. Uh, but for us, we provide that front-end market intelligence um, as well as that detailed product tracking, keyword tracking uh, that allows you to really get into the fine details to make the changes in your business to, to ultimately uh, get some great results. Just a, a couple of quick stats that I like to share. Uh, we do have on average 35% revenue growth with any client that joins us within the first uh, 12 months of being a customer with us. And then they typically have about six or 26% improvement on the return on ad spend. So uh, if someone does come into us, we're going to help you be more efficient and uh, do some really good stuff with your Amazon account. Sounds really good. And what's the best way to reach out to you or uh, learn more about the services you offer? Perfect. Yeah. So, of course, go to datahawk.co uh, and you can see all of the good stuff there. We've got great resources, blog, uh, customer stories, videos, all kinds of cool stuff. And then uh, if you want to reach out to me personally, Jeremiah at datahawk.co. Uh, I'd love to hear your email if you have any questions, concerns, if you want to see a demo any of that stuff, uh, or if you just want to yell at me, uh, that's fine too, you know, whatever you want to do. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> well, thanks again for taking the time to join me today. And uh, yeah, we wish good luck in your business and hopefully you have a strong uh, Q4 for all of your clients. Thank you very much. And uh, really appreciate all my friends over at Orange Click for having me today. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand how important Amazon SEO is for your product ranking. If you liked tips we shared, don't forget to hit like and subscribe below this video. Also, if you want to try DataHawk for yourself, uh, find a special offer below in the video description. And now I recommend you to watch other video where Stephen Pope explains how to use Amazon SEO to increase market share.